So here's our computations and unit conversions lesson dealing with application questions that are from a more general format. So here we have a subdivision plan and it's calling for 12 houses per hectare and it's expected that on average three and a half persons will live in each house and each person will possess 0.65 cars and we want to calculate the number of cars per hectare. This is a density kind of calculation that's very common in building construction science uh, situations. And you might at first think, well, you know, how can we have part people and part cars here? In density calculations, this, this just comes up because we are making uh, calculating averages. So we just wanted to have an example that uh, includes this for our um, application questions. So the first thing we're going to do is identify what is our desired rate. And we want to know, well, how many cars are per hectare? And we can use our unit ratio technique to help us with this because we can follow the same process once we've identified what our desired rate is. So we're going to look for the equivalences in our given example. And if we read it through again, we'll see that there's 12 houses is equivalent to one hectare. Remember, HA is the abbreviation for hectare. One house is equivalent to 3.5 persons, and one person is equivalent to 0.65 cars. So we can take each of these equivalences and make them into unit ratios, but we might have a bit of trouble figuring out, well, where do I start? And this is why, you know, this engineering technique, this reverse engineering starting at the end here, um, is handy because we want to have cars per hectare. So a good strategy is to take a look at the numerator. I want cars. So then I scan through my equivalences and I find the one that has cars in it and I have this one down here. And what I do then is I take that equivalence and I make it a unit ratio such that the unit that I want is in the numerator. So we can see here, I've transcribed it as 0.65 cars per person. And now I have a good starting point and I'm partly done because I wanted cars in the numerator and I have cars in the numerator. Now we can continue with our unit ratio technique by using the other ratios and multiplying through until our desired units are left not just in the numerator but also in the denominator in this case. So I need to get rid of persons, I go to my next equivalence, write it as a unit ratio, and now I have persons per house. So the persons will cancel out and now I need to get rid of houses. My last equivalence has houses in it, so I write that as a unit ratio with houses in the numerator and now my houses will cancel out. So let's look at how those units all cancel out and leave us with what we want. So the persons cancel, the houses cancel, and I'm left with the cars per hectare, exactly the ratio I needed. So let's continue our process, gather our numbers, and do our calculation. So there's the 65 times the 3.5 times the 12, all over one, and we have cars per hectare. So our final density is, for this particular subdivision, it will have 27.3 cars per hectare, and we might need that in other building construction science applications. Another example, this is an industrial engine. It's consuming fuel at the rate of 0.45 gallons per minute. Our engine is running for eight hours per day. One liter of fuel has a mass of 0.65 kilograms, and we want to calculate the rate of consumption in kilograms per hour. So very similar to our previous question, we'll start with what is our desired rate? So we want to know how many kilograms per hour. Continue on with our unit ratio technique and we'll identify the equivalences in the given problem. So we're given that there's 0.45 gallons is equivalent to one minute, eight hours is equivalent to one day, one liter of our fuel has 0.65 kilograms. Now this last one here, this is from my table of equivalences, one gallon is 4.546 liters. This one is not given in our actual problem. We actually we, um, said that, you know, we could take equivalences from the given situation, but we also might need some from our tables of equivalences or our other sources. And because I want kilograms per hour, you know, I have gallons here as one of my equivalences, so I'm going to have to be able to get rid of those gallons. And so I chose one that had gallons in it, but also I chose one with liters because now I have an equivalence that was given between liters and kilogram. So my gallons and my liters should both disappear. We'll do the same thing we did last time. We're going to start with the equivalence that has the desired top, this time category of measure. Because I've got kilograms here, which is a mass. So let's try and focus on that. So which of my equivalences has mass in it? And that's going to be the 0.65 kilograms per liter. 
So once again, choosing that as a starting point, you know, the reverse engineering, start with what we want at the end, start with the equivalence or unit ratio that has the unit that I desire in the numerator, gives me a good springboard starting point. Now I need to get rid of liters, so I'll go for this one. Remember, we got this from our table of equivalences, multiply by the unit ratio, and our liters will go away. Same thing, now I'm going to need to get rid of gallons. My other equivalence here has gallons in it. Multiply by that ratio, and the gallons will disappear. And now I'm left with minutes here. And we want hours, so I don't have it listed here, but from common knowledge, we should know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. Now, something to pay attention to here is that this ratio that we were given in our problem, 8 hours is one day, we didn't actually need to use it this time around because we weren't interested in kilograms per day. We wanted just kilograms per hour. So please recognize that sometimes you'll have extra information that you might not necessarily need to use. Let's do our dimensional analysis and see how the units cancel out. So my liters cancel, my gallons cancel, my minutes cancel, my dimensional analysis is appropriate. I've got kilograms per hour just like I wanted. And now what we can do is go ahead and gather our numbers and do our calculation. So here's all the values, 0 0.65, 4.546, 0 0.45, and 60, and just one in the denominator do the calculation and to two decimal places, our rate in kilograms per hour is 79.78. Another question, we have a car that's traveling at a speed, velocity v, of 95 kilometers per hour around a curve of radius r, 160 meters. We want the acceleration a of the car in meters per second squared, and we're given the formula that acceleration a is equal to velocity squared divided by radius. So we'll identify the formula we need and enter our given information. So we are given the formula area is v squared over r. It might help us to see this better as, you know, separate these two as a multiplication instead of a division. So v squared times 1 over r. So let's enter our given information. So our velocity was 95, and remember we have to square it. Here's the units, kilometers per hour, but we also have to square those units. And 1 over radius, 1 over 160 meters. So we can see here that our units for acceleration are currently kilometers squared per hour squared meter. And we want it in meters per second squared. So we're going to have to do some unit ratio technique, unit conversions, to convert these units that we have into something that we want. Again, we're going to look at our equivalences that we might need from the table or maybe the metrics prefixes. We should recognize that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. That's from our metric prefixes. From our tables, it actually tells us that there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. And we should be able to now multiply our given information by our unit ratios so that we have the resulting correct units both in the numerator and the denominator. So I want to get rid of kilometers squared. So here's my kilometer squared equivalence. So remember, this is a length one, but I have squared. So I'm going to have to square everything here. So there's my unit ratio. 1,000 squared meter squared is the same as 1 kilometer squared. So now my kilometers will be gone. And if you take a look at this here, we have meters squared and meters. So just one of these will cancel it up top, and this one will cancel on the bottom. So I will be left with meters in the numerator just like what I want. I also need to get rid of the hours squared though, and we'll use this equivalence here, but again, since we squared, we have that squared in our original formula, we're going to have to square this equivalence. So I have one hour squared is 3600 squared second squared. So this is maybe a little bit difficult because of the squaring that's going on and keeping track of all the units, but it's still totally doable. Let's look at how all our units cancel out. So there's our kilometers squared going away. There's the meter in the denominator going, and one of them in the numerator. That's why I just crossed out the two, so this one is left. And now there's our hour squareds are gone, so our, dimen our dimensional analysis shows that we do have meters per second squared, which is, of course, what we wanted. So we can now go ahead and gather our numbers and do our calculation. So here's the numbers, the 95 squared, the 1,000 squared in the numerator, the 160, 
and then the 3600 squared in the denominator. So our final acceleration to two decimal places is 4.35 meters per second squared. Our next example is actually the same question, but an alternate method. And we just uh, include this so that you can see that there are very often different ways of doing things. And as long as they're all mathematically correct, there's no problem. You can use the methods. So we'll identify the needed formula and enter the given information just like before. So there's our acceleration, v squared over r, or separated into a multiplication. Identify equivalences, and we may have seen in our uh, velocity category on our tables of equivalences that one kilometer per hour was equivalent to 0.278 meters per second. So maybe we could use that instead of the different method we did before. So let's put in our values, our 95 kilometers per hour times the unit ratio, 0.278 meters per second is the same as one kilometer per hour. And so see how I've done the unit conversion right inside the velocity squared calculation. And that avoids me having to do anything over here with the radius. Let's see how the units cancel out, do our dimensional analysis. So the kilometers per hour are gone. So this entire red unit, this entire red unit, and I'm left with the meters per second all squared here. We'll gather the numbers and do our calculation. So there's the 95 times the 0.278. Don't forget we do have to square that, all divided by the 160. And our units, so there's the meters squared per second squared, so that's from here. And we are multiplying that by 1 over meters, so there's our 1 over meters. And again, if you look at the cancellation, this meter will cancel with 1 up here. And same as before, we're left with meters per second squared. And our final answer, once again, is 4.35 meters per second squared. Our next example, we have a car consuming gasoline at the rate of 25 miles per gallon. And we just want to convert this to liters per 100 kilometers. Now this might be something new for us. Previous questions, we've just gone, you know, liters per kilometers or, you know, um, meters per second squared, we've never actually had a unit in the, or a number, excuse me, in the denominator. So, you know, pay attention to this one, it might be a little different. So we're going to identify our desired rate, just like before. We want liters per 100 kilometer. So not just liters per kilometer, per 100 kilometer. We'll ID equivalences that we might need. We know that from our original problem, we have 25 miles in one gallon. From the tables of equivalences, I've looked up these top two. One mile is 1.609 kilometers, so that's from length. And one gallon is 4.546 liters, that's from volume. So let's now start with the equivalence that has the desired top category. So we want liters in the numerator, so which one will we use? We'll use the 4.546. So I have, there's my unit ratio. Now I need to get rid of gallons, and this is where I can come into this one and choose to get rid of the gallons. So multiply by my unit ratio, gallons per miles. Now I need to get rid of miles and change them to kilometers. So I'm left with this last one down here. Miles to kilometers. Let's do our dimensional analysis. The gallons disappear, the miles disappear, and I'm left with liters per kilometer. Let's gather our numbers and do our calculation. So we have the 4.546 in the numerator and the 25 times 1.609 in the denominator. But notice how this is liters per kilometer. And remember, we want liters per 100 kilometers. So how we do that is we can multiply it again by another unit ratio. And it's really a unit ratio, again, just equals to 1, 100 kilometers over 100 kilometers. Because this will, you know, each of them can cancel with each other. So effectively, this ratio here is just 1. So I'm not changing anything with my given information. What I am changing is that now the bottom will be 100 kilometers. So, you know, you can think of these kilometers cancelling out. And now I have liters per 100 kilometers. So let's gather our numbers again. So notice now how we have the 4.546 times 100 in the numerator the 25 times 1.609 in the denominator, and notice how I've kept the 100 kilometers separate because that's what the original rate was that I wanted. So our final overall answer will be 11.30 liters per 100 kilometers. So, you know, just keep this as a strategy for the future. 
that, you know, if you are asked for something a little different, it's still totally doable. One more example, we have a waterbed. It measures 60 inches by 72 inches by 6 inches, and it's filled with water weighing 62 and a half pounds per cubic foot. And we want the mass of the water in tons, and remember this is metric tons. So we're given some information. Let's identify what that information is. And the first piece that I can look at is, well, I may be able to recognize that the water weighing 62 and a half pounds per cubic feet, well, that's considered density. Now, this might not be general knowledge for you, but again, you know, you could either with discussions with classmates or with me, your instructor or, you know, Googling things, looking things up in reference books, you could um, remember what that is or find out what that is. So density is defined as mass divided by volume. So there's our mass in pounds and our volume in cubic feet. Symbol D is M over V. Now, we want to calculate the mass so we'll need to rearrange this. Mass is just going to be density times volume. Our given dimensions are 60 inches, which is 5 feet, 72 inches, which is 6 feet, and 6 inches, which is just half a foot. And remember, if you, you, know, if you happen to forget, there's 12 inches in one foot, so we've divided each of these values, the given values, by 12. Now, why did I change to feet? Well, because I've got here a volume in feet cubed. So if I can do this conversion right up front, then I can anticipate that I'll have a little bit le less work to do later. So my volume now will be 5 feet times 6 feet times a half feet, a foot, excuse me. So volume is 15 cubic feet. I can now take that and take the volume and the density and put them together to calculate the mass. So there's my mass is density times volume. Let's put in the values, 62 and a half pounds per cubic foot and times 15 cubic feet. And we should see how the feet cubed will be canceling out. From our tables of equivalences though, because we want the mass in tons, metric tons. So I'm gonna to need to convert those pounds to metric tons. And from our table, we can see that one kilogram is 2.205 pounds and one metric ton, abbreviated small t, is 1,000 kilograms. So I'll use my ratios, I'll convert pounds to kilograms, and I'll convert kilograms to tons. And you saw how all the units canceled out. Now I can gather all my numbers, so 62 and a half times 15, all divided by the 2.205 times 1,000. So my overall mass to three decimal places is 0 0.425 metric tons.